So the Bose Mortal Soundbar 600 is a great mid-tier soundbar that has improved instrument separation from its predecessor and it now has true Dolby Atmos support. Personally, I feel that you can't go wrong with the Bose Smart Soundbar 600. It's an all-around solid pickup. But today, we're going to compare the 600 to the Bose Smart Soundbar 900. And we're also going to compare it to Bose's entry-level soundbar, the Bose TV speaker. Now, when it comes to pricing, the Bose TV speaker has a retail price of $280. The 600 has a retail price of $500. And the 900 has a retail price of $900. Now, in this video, I'm going to be strictly focusing on the soundbars themselves. However, with either the 600 or 900, you can always build them out by adding an external subwoofer and or surround sound speakers. Whereas with the Bose TV speaker, you can only add an external subwoofer. But nonetheless, both the 600 and 900 are perfectly fine all by themselves. Now, first, let's talk about the design of these soundbars. Now, all of these soundbars have a height of 2.2 inches and they all have a depth of 4.1 inches. However, the Bose TV speaker has the shortest length here coming in at 23.4 inches. The 600 has a length of 27.3 inches and then there's the 900 which is noticeably longer coming in with a length of 41.1 inches. Overall, all of these soundbars have relatively small footprints but the 900 can be a little more challenging to place in your setup. Now when it comes to materials, all of these soundbars have grills on the front and both the TV speaker and 600 are mostly made out of plastic. Now overall, the 600 does the best job here of simply disappearing when you're going to watch the movie with it because there's no constantly on indicator lights, whereas with the TV speaker, this thing does have a constantly on indicator light, which personally I find to be very distracting. And then there's the 900. Now the glass top on this soundbar is very elegant. However, depending on your setup, this glass top can cause a reflection. And personally, I find this reflection to be very distracting. So personally, for me, the 600 is my preferred soundbar here design-wise because it just does the best job of simply disappearing when you're going to watch a movie with it. However, something that all of these soundbars do have in common is that they all plug in via a universal AC port and none of them have any external power bricks that you have to worry about. So wiring any of these soundbars into your setup can be a little easier and it also makes wall mounting any of these soundbars a little easier as well. The only thing to look out for is that none of these soundbars come included with a wall mounting kit. That sold separately. Now when it comes to ports, all of these soundbars only have one HDMI port, so unfortunately you can't plug in a gaming console or Blu-ray player directly into any of these soundbars. Now both the 600 and 900 have eARC ports, plus their upward firing drivers, they both have true Dolby Atmos support. Whereas the TV speaker has a standard HDMI ARC port. Now both the 600 and 900 come included with HDMI cables, something that's new for Bose's mid-tier soundbar. Whereas with the TV speaker, you are going to have to supply your HDMI cable because it only comes included with an optical cable. The only major different port found on the 900, which isn't found on these other two soundbars, is that it has an Ethernet port. But regardless, both the 900 and 600 have Wi-Fi. And after you have either of these two soundbars connected up to Wi-Fi, you'll be able to control them through their app. You'll be able to stream music through them by either using AirPlay or Chromecast. And if you want, you can always use a voice assistant with either of these two soundbars. You can either use your Alexa or Google Assistant. However, the TV speaker doesn't have Wi-Fi, so there's no app and you're also not going to be able to stream music to it by either using AirPlay or Chromecast. However, it does have Bluetooth. Now both the 600 and 900 also have Bluetooth and Bluetooth is good to use if you don't have a solid Wi-Fi network at home. But regardless, streaming music to either the 600 or 900 is a lot more convenient over Wi-Fi than with Bluetooth because with Wi-Fi you're going to have a lot more range. But with all of the basic stuff out of the way, let's talk about the sound performance of these soundbars. Regarding speaker setups, the Bose TV speaker has a single frontward firing tweeter, it has dual frontward firing drivers, and it has a single bass chamber. But then there's the 600 which has a single frontward firing tweeter, and it has a total of four drivers, two of which can be found on the ends of this soundbar and they shoot out at like a 45 degree angle. 
and two of them fire upwards. And the 600 has two base chambers with exhaust ports that shoot out the back. But then there is the 900. The 900 has a single frontward firing tweeter. It has four frontward firing drivers. We've got two base chambers, just like the 600, except a little larger. And at the end, there are upward firing drivers. But now we're gonna jump into the sound test. Now, all of these sound bars are playing with their stock EQs. Now, in order for the Bose TV speaker to keep up, it's going to be playing at max volume, whereas both the 600 and 900 are playing at 75% volume. So like you may have just heard, unless you have a higher end TV, your TV most likely just has a pair of downward firing speakers that bounce sound off of the table, they don't get all that loud, and at higher volumes or when the bass really gets going, they just become a distorted mess. Now first, let's address the Bose TV speaker. Now yes, this soundbar is an improvement from your TV's built-in speakers, but personally I am not all that impressed by this soundbar. First off, this soundbar doesn't get nearly as loud as these other two soundbars. It also doesn't have as much bass. And distortion is a noticeable problem for this soundbar at higher volumes. And this soundbar really does sound very narrow, so it just sounds narrow but louder. Overall, the Bose TV speaker gets the job done, but personally, I would not feel satisfied with it. But now let's turn our attention to the big players here. Now, thanks to the upward firing drivers found on both the 600 and 900, both of these soundboards have a good sense of verticality to them. They both have true Dolby Atmos support, and even if you're not watching Dolby Atmos content, you're still going to enjoy improved instrument separation and good immersiveness with both of these soundboards. And improved instrument separation is the main 
main upgrade found on the 600 over its predecessor, the 300. Now, personally, I feel that the 600 is going to have no problem filling a bedroom or small to medium-sized living room with sound all by itself. It gets decently loud and it has a decent amount of bass. Now, obviously, you're not going to have as much bass as an external subwoofer, but you're still going to be able to feel what's happening on the screen. But then there's the 900. Now the 900 gets louder and has more bass than the 600 and its center channel does sound fuller because it has those four drivers aimed directly at you. Now personally, I feel that the 600 is a good default option, but if you want more sound, then you can always go for the 900. But the core performance difference between the 600 and 900 is the same. They both have the same SMS separation and distortion is not an issue. Because for comparison's sake, going from the Bose TV speaker to the 600, not only are you going to get more volume and more bass, you're also going to get much better SMS separation and distortion is not going to be an issue at those higher volumes. Whereas going from the 600 to the 900, the only performance difference is just going to be more volume. But also last year when we compared the 300 to the 900, which is the 600's predecessor, I definitely recommended that you go with the 900 over the 300 because with the 900 you're going to have better instrument separation alongside more volume and more bass. But this time around going from the 600 to the 900, the main difference is just straight up volume. And overall that's a good thing, especially for the 600. Now, whether you decide to go with the 600 or 900, personally, I do recommend that you go in and raise the center channel so that dialogue is more prominent. I also like to raise the bass so that you can better feel those action scenes. And I also like to raise the high channel on both of these soundbars so that you can get more verticality out of them. Now, with the Bose TV speaker, you can't customize its EQ like you can with these other two soundbars. However, you can choose from a dialogue or bass plus mode EQ directly from the included remote. Now, these other two soundbars also come included with included remotes, and the remote that comes included with the 900 is a little nicer. But personally, I never use these included remotes because with both the 600 or 900, I just use the app. However, one feature that the 900 does have over both the 600 and TV speaker is that you can calibrate it to your room by using the included microphone and also using the Adapt IQ feature, which you can find in the app. But something that both the 900 and 600 do have over the TV speaker is that they both have simple sync. So if you have any Bose headphones or speakers, you can always sync them up to either the 600 or 900. And this feature is particularly useful Useful, especially if you have any Bose headphones because then this way you can fully enjoy your content late at night without running the risk of disturbing anybody at home. Now, as a heads up, I have managed to get SimpleSync to work with non-Bose products. However, if you are interested in using SimpleSync, then I highly recommend that you use a Bose product because this way you'll know that it'll work because if you try to use non-Bose products, you don't know if it's going to work or not. But with all that being said, if you're in the market for a soundbar and if you're trying to choose between any of these Bose soundbars, then here's my breakdown. Personally, I'm not all that impressed by the Bose TV speaker. Now, yes, it does get the job done, but it doesn't get all that loud, it doesn't have too much bass, it does sound rather narrow, and at higher volumes, distortion is a problem. The real question here is choosing between the 600 and the 900. Now personally, I feel that the 600 is a great default option for anybody trying to fill their bedroom or small to medium sized living room with sound. The 600 gets decently loud and has a decent amount of bass in a rather discreet package. And thanks to its new upward firing drivers, the 600 does have improved instrument separation and true Dolby Atmos support. However, if you need to fill a larger space with sound, or if you just want more sound, then you can always go with the 900. The 900 gets louder and it has more bass and its center channel sounds fuller. My only critique about the 900 is just that I don't like its glass top. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video. So hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know I can be very particular. So I'll only slap my name on something if I'm really proud of it.